So you've cleared all of that negative energy out of your house and it just keeps coming back. What the heck? You just clear it again and you 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 clear it again. How do we stop that cycle? I'll share my secrets to warding and protecting the energy that you have worked so hard to establish in your home. Coming up next. Hi guys, welcome to the Witch's Studio. I'm coming back at you once a week, sharing all kinds of spells, witchy tips, tricks for living your magical life. If this is the kind of thing that you want to have in your life, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell because then you will be the first to know when I post a new video. When random people come into my house, they always comment about how nice the energy feels in my home. And when my witchy friends come in, they say stuff like, man, I can really feel the protection energy when I enter your home. Some people say they even feel negativity coming off of them as they enter my house. Is that just a coincidence? Absolutely not. I've been putting magical protection in place in my homes for years. Literally, ever since I first started working witchcraft, this is what I have been doing. Because I work really hard to keep my energy up. So putting magical words in place makes good sense. And I wanna share some of my secrets with you guys so that you can do the same in your home. And for those of you who are watching this now, during the uh, spring of 2020, you're in your home all of the time. So now is a really good time to cleanse those vibes and then put protections in place so that no negativity is coming into your home because it's all around us right now. It's a really good time to work on protecting and shielding ourselves against that kind of thing. There's a lot of positive vibes going around too right now. That These kind of situations tend to bring out the best and the worst in people. And if you put your magical words in place, then at least the energy that enters into your home is the best and not the worst. Number one. And this is something that we see across many, many cultures, uh, a protection amulet that you put by your front door. Place a representation of any protective symbol that you like, like a hamsa hand, a pentagram, eye of Horus, anywhere by your front door. When you come in the door, glance at it and visualize any astral nasties, bad vibes that are in your aura blasting off of you and being left outside of your door as you enter. Kind of like a mystical car wash. It's just blowing all that energy off of you right out the front door. Nothing negative can come in. Before you do, charge it with the intention that it will keep negativity out of your home. And I'm going to show you how to basically enchant this with your energy. You could use this technique for all of the shields and the wards that I'm going to show you in this video. And it's so simple. So what you would do is you hold it in your hands. Picture a shield in your mind if you want, like a literal shield like a knight would use. Picture that in your mind and then bring it into your chest like you feel there's a shield inside of you and you can see it. And then what you do is you imagine that shield dissolving into silver or gold energy, however you want to envision it. But it becomes, instead of a solid shield, it becomes energy. And you envision that in your chest, growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger and expanding. And as it does, you feel that energy coming down your arms and into your hands. And then you push that shield energy into your item, your magical ward, whatever it is. You just envision this, it's all done in visualization. You push all that shielding energy into that item. And if you wanna say some words, you can, but you don't have to. Let's use whatever speaks to you. It's very simple. And then you have empowered that piece. You filled it with energy and your intention. This is a method that you will use for every single word that I'm going to show you in this video. Number two, a broom or a besom. When we think of a broom, 
we think of it as being an active tool, the kind of thing that you would use to sweep negativity out of your home. Uh, I've used a besom for years and years in witchcraft, uh, sweeping basically just above the ground in order to clear the energy out of the space where you're going to be casting your circle. But you can also use it as a ward. And this goes way back. It's a little bit of folk magic. If you place a broom bristle side up by your front door, again, either on the inside or the outside, it's an astral do not disturb sign. It's a great way to keep negative energy, entities, or even unwanted guests from dropping by. You also can hang it above your door. Lots of people do that and use a besom like that as a, basically as a doorway. So you can hang it above your door. This is something that we did in one of my covens years ago when we were initiating people was we actually used this very one and we held it up and used it as a gateway for people to enter the circle. Besom or broom can also be considered a gateway. And if you're not really into having a big broom by your door, you can just work it in with your decor. Use a smaller broom. Use your intention, it doesn't matter. I made this one uh, for putting on a door. You can also use a much smaller broom to hang above your door if you want to. Be creative, see what you come up with. Number three, charm bags. Charm bags can be really beautiful or really simple. It doesn't really matter how you choose to do it. It's again the intention and what you put into it. The charm bags are a wonderful way to protect your home and protect your energy. You can literally place a charm bag on every single windowsill in your house. Put one up above your front door, one up above your back door. Easy peasy. And they're so easy to make. First I like to gather all my supplies together. There's a couple different kinds you can do. This is a fancier charm bag that you can do with a drawstring. But this one was made with just some fabric that was bundled together. I started with a satyr square. Uh, that is a magical palindrome that's, uh, that's ancient Latin. And I put that in the bag, it's very protective. And then I went ahead and started adding different items. You don't have to add the same things that I've added. Uh, you can pick and choose from what you have around the house. You know, I kind of like to use a mix of different herbs and some stones, things like that. Uh, anything, you know, any of your herbs that are too big, you can just crush them up uh, so that they'll fit inside your bag and uh, just keep adding different things as you like until you get it just the way you like it. I had some fresh lavender, so I added that. And clothes are good for both money and protection. I really like using clothes for protection. Eggshells are a really great protection energy, and I'll probably show you guys how to make eggshell powder at some point. And uh, of course, the old standby, sea salt. And then you, it's, you simply just take your piece of fabric and gather it all up together. Uh, I like this fabric that I found. It had some cool little skulls all over it, and I felt like it was super protective. But again, just use any fabric that you happen to have. Um, and then I, I like to use a red string to tie it with. This string that I'm using is uh, embroidery floss and I usually tie it three times. Uh, again, you can do it however you like. You don't have to do it exactly the way I did and you don't have to have the same ingredients. I don't want anybody to think that you can't do this without those ingredients. There it is. And then I tied a little skull uh, charm on it as well, and you can put it in your windows. I think it turned out pretty cool. You also can make one of these protective charm bags to carry in your pocket. Some people like to carry it um, in their bra. Uh, some people like to carry it in their purse. Uh, but again, you can just carry it in your pocket too. Number four. Witches' burrs. 
These little guys are so cool. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen these in a lot of my photographs. For one thing, I just think they're awesome looking. These can be used for adding extra power to all of your magical workings. They also are symbols for fertility and abundance, but above all, they're great for protection magic. Take a look at this guy. See all the little spikes on that? And I think they look like little beaks, like little bird's beaks. That packs some powerful protection energy, also known as liquid amber, which I don't know why, because it's neither liquid nor amber, but that's one of the mysteries, I suppose. Now, there are areas where these grow in abundance all over the place. In my town, we have these trees everywhere. They're known as sweet gum trees. They're uh, pretty prevalent in the South. I live in Missouri. We have tons of these and you can just walk by and pick them up. You can put these on your windowsills. You can fill up a jar with them and make it pretty and decorative and set it anywhere you want to in your home. You can keep these on your altar. You can even use them as part of a bigger decorative piece that you can hang up. Number five, salt. It's so easy to use salt for magical warding and protecting. You can literally just take little pinches of salt and sprinkle them in all the corners of your home. It's that easy. In all the corners of your room. When you do it, do it with intention. You hold the salt in your hand for a minute and just basically awaken the salt and let it know I need your protection energy right now and I'm doing a protective ward. And it's that easy. You just sprinkle a little bit in all the corners of your house. Kitchen witchery at its finest. Another trick that I like to do is you can put a little dish of salt by your front door and it also will help to repel negative energy. Here's a great trick for uh, my friends who are in the broom closet. Take a seashell like this and you can put a little sea salt inside of the shell. And then if you just kind of shake it like this and tip it around, the salt goes inside the shell so it's not even seen. And you could set it anywhere in your house. Number six, mirrors. You can enchant any mirror in your home to bounce negative energy back and away from you and your family and your home. Mirrors are really great for magical protection. I actually wrote a lot about this in my book, The Witch's Mirror, and there's actually tons of spells and formulas in here uh, for enchanting mirrors for all different purposes, not just for protection. But right now, I just wanna share a really simple way that you can use any mirror to ward your house. These little guys are great. These are just little, these are little mirrored tiles. Basically, any craft store carries them and they're just the perfect little size. You can just pop that right onto your windowsill facing out and just leave it there. You can draw a magical symbol on the back if you wish. I didn't on this one, but you can, uh, but you don't have to. I do recommend that before you use a mirror for witchcraft, wash it with a mixture of water and vinegar and I'll put the amounts in the description down below. And then you can simply just charge it with your hands. Just place your hands in front of that mirror and charge it. Tell it in your own words, I want you to be a guardian for my home. Shield us all from negative energy. Send any bad vibes back to wherever they came from. It's that simple. Here's are also great magical wards if you're in the broom closet because it just looks like a mirror doesn't look like anything weird. Just enchant it with your energy. Uh, you can turn some mirrors into a really cool sun catcher. And that is another great way to uh, cast any negative energy away from your house. And you just hang it in the window. It looks like a pretty decorative piece. Another really super cool under the radar trick is this mirror tape. And I just found this at a big box store. Just cut a little piece off and then grab a permanent marker and you can actually put um, any kind of protective symbol that you like on the sticky side of the tape. 
and uh, you know just take a take your marker and just put whatever symbol that you like to use for protection right on the back of it you could put this in a drawer you can put it um, in your notebook you can put it in all kinds of places that are totally secretive and you can actually pop one right on your window too on the outside of your window nobody's going to think twice about seeing that there it's really small and unobtrusive number seven protective seals so you can put protective seals on your doors and your windows these are completely invisible once you've put them in place that's kind of the beauty of these things especially for those of you who are uh, new to witchcraft, who are young witches, seekers, and you don't have any way to put a broom over your door or charm bags in your windowsill would look weird and would probably garner attention that you don't necessarily want. Uh, protective seals are a perfect way for you to work some really good magic because they're completely invisible to the naked eye. No one will ever see them. There's different kinds of liquids that you can use. You can use oils if you want, or you can use an infusion. Uh, again, um, if you have herbs on hand, you can use those. Sometimes you might be surprised at how many things you can find literally growing in your yard that are protective herbs. And if you guys are interested in possibly having a video that shows you some magical herbs that you could find growing outside in your yard, let me know in the comments down below and I will work on putting that together for you as soon as possible. Really, all you need is an herbal infusion or moon water or some water with it, like a drop of oil, magical oil in it that you want to use. I grabbed moon water for mine. Uh, just water charged under the full moon. Easy. And uh, I personally like to use lavender oil. It's very protective and it just has a wonderful vibe. Swish it around a little bit to kind of mix the oil in with the water. And simply draw your symbol on your door, window, any place that you want to. You can use a pentagram. You can use a triketra like this which is a little more complex to trace out, but if you're pretty talented, you could probably manage it. My brother made this for me. Thanks, Brian. And if you don't feel like you're super artistic, just do an equal armed cross. That is a protective symbol that goes way back, is used across cultures, super easy and very highly protective symbol. It's just simple, one, two, like that. It's a plus sign. Then you have sealed your home and protected it against negative energy. Number eight, the witch's bottle. The witch's bottle is a great method for magical protection and for warding your space. Now this is a method that goes way back. This is centuries old technique. Um, I actually have another video about witch's bottles and I will post the link right up here. Definitely check that out. This is the bottle that I made in that video. But essentially uh, what happens is you take any bottle, you fill it up with sharp spiky things. Uh, you want to put some pins, some nails, uh, garlic if you have it is great, broken glass, thorns, salt, uh, cloves are really good. In the classic version of these that have been found at archaeological sites, they then fill the bottle up with urine. You do not have to use urine. You can use vinegar. Some people use red wine. Some people just leave, uh, just leave it without any kind of liquid in it, which is also fine. A witch's bottle is a great protective amulet for your home to ward your space. A lot of times uh, a witch's bottle like this, a protective bottle would be buried on your property or placed uh, somehow underneath your porch, things like that. Uh, lots of people like to just keep them in their home. I intended to bury this one and right now I'm just hanging on to it and keeping it in the house because it's pretty cool and it's got a great story behind it. But what can a witch's bottle look like? It can look like a lot of different things. This is a uh, glass bottle that I picked up that's a uh, faux mercury glass. This would make a great witch's bottle because not only can you put all of the things inside that you would use in a traditional protective witch's bottle, but it also has 
the mirror quality as well. So that would be a perfect witch's bottle. My friend Paul Meserly, who is a uh, Cabot High Priest, he makes these gorgeous witch's bottles. Now this one is not for magical protection. This is uh, the hollow one, and this is for ancestors, and he makes them. So if anybody really wants an elegant, gorgeous, fantastic witch's bottle, and you just don't have the time, the energy, or the supplies to make one, I will put his link in the description below, and you can take a look at what he has there. I mean, these are wonderful. Uh, the Celtic Cork on Etsy. It actually smells good. But a witch's bottle can look like a lot of different things. I will tell you guys something. I made a witch's bottle that isn't a bottle. And when I tell you guys, think outside the box a little bit in your witchcraft, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. I had a statue that one of those kinds, it's hollow on the inside. I literally flipped it upside down, stuffed it full of things that I had gathered for uh, protection energy. And I put it all inside of that, sealed it with a, a cork that I cut to the right shape of that and then filled that with sealing wax so that nothing would come out of it. I did not put liquid in that one. I just kept it dry. And I set it up on a shelf. It looks like a beautiful statue. It does not look like a witch's bottle. So these are things that I'm talking about. You guys can do these kinds of wards and protections and shielding for your home and for yourself that doesn't necessarily look like a big gleaming pentagram that you you know to drive evil away you can literally make these things as obvious or as under the radar as you want it to be get creative have fun with it i hope that you guys use some of these ideas in your home i want to thank everybody for stopping by. I hope that these ideas gave you a jumping off place, someplace to start thinking about how can I keep my home magically protected. Um, feel free to mix it up. Use just one of these ideas or use one or two or three of them. You don't have to do them exactly the way that I showed them. Be creative and see what you come up with because being creative is to me the most important part of witchcraft. It's the most fun part of witchcraft. And it's the part that helps you to awaken that magical energy that lives inside of you and just let it out and let it blossom and see what you can do with it. Trust yourself above all, because you have the power to make your life what you want it to be. That is after all the whole point of witchcraft. And seriously, if you're new here or you've watched a few of my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do that because it really helps my channel out. And if this really spoke to you and you feel like there's something here that you can use, give me a thumbs up too. Hit that, hit that thumbs up button as well, because that also really helps my channel and it also makes me feel really happy. Here's a couple more videos that I think you guys will really enjoy. I hope that you're all staying happy and safe and healthy. We've got a lot more in store. Keep loving each other, keep being safe and happy. And remember above, all as always to be your magic bye guys take care and blessings